Welcome to the Manny Perez Show, the show that covers, works on, and solves our community's issues. Yes, we can with the Manny Perez Show. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Manny Perez Show. I'm Manny Manuel Perez, your community leader, political leader, and a businessman dedicated to helping people like you find success and create a new future and helping my community find solutions. Today, we will be talking about transportation and we're going to, we're going to be accompanied by our journalist Gabriel Ascanio and our production engineer Julio Camacho. He's our silent partner, but we will be talking about transportation about what it means, why it's so important. And yes, we hope to touch upon what we can do about it. So now it's over to Gabriela, as usual, to find out what's going on in our community. So hello, everybody. We're going to start with the news. That it's weird that I, I read about some people or a person that is vandalizing a few cars on the streets, especially in Astoria and some parts in East Elmhurst. That's been happening uh, the, this year, or that's when I saw it. And um, it's very complicated because it's not that you're making a graffiti in a wall that is not making any harm, that is not that good either, but it's not as bad as those people get at their home uh, at night, they leave their car, they go and take a, uh, they go to sleep. And then when they woke, wake up in the next morning and they're going back to work, they find their car being vandalized. And that is a huge problem because uh, they might get a ticket if they don't repair it right away. It's not something that you're going to say, oh, I'm going to drive it that way. And then next month I'm going to paint it. No, because if the police uh, sees you, they're going to put a ticket and no, somebody else did it. They don't care. And it's a major problem for somebody that is not, not, uh, is not doing anything to you because I don't understand the reason behind that, those actions. Uh, I don't think there's something that you can say, oh, that's a good reason for doing it. It's not a good reason. You don't, you're not doing any good to anybody. And um, at least 20 cars got vandalized last week. And it's a shame that, uh, that that is a tool for a lot of people for work. And then you get it. It's not destroyed, but now you have to spend a lot of cash a lot of money to repair the damage so um okay go ahead no no it's a major problem and it's a major problem for working families people who need their cars to do their work and um these graffiti artists are have been a problem for a while but what's surprising is that now they're attacking the cars of their neighbors here in Northwest Queens, having our streets, over 20 cars, come on. Those are 20 families that are being affected. It's expensive to repair the car. And if the person is one of those people who's not getting unemployment, they're in trouble, real trouble. If they're getting unemployment, it's still not much if you're talking about car repairs. And that's where we as neighbors have to take care of each other. If you see something, let your neighbor know. If you have a camera that's recording what's going on in the street, please make sure that that the video does get to the police simply because we need to stop it. I've read reports that there's increased gang activity. And yes, some of the violence in the streets is related to gang violence, but if the gangs are starting to introduce new ways of gaining new members, which is uh, they, they have to 
do graffiti on a car. That's horrible. It really is horrible because it costs us money. It hurts our community. So please, if you see something, don't keep it quiet because we need to stop them. Vandalism to somebody's car, it can affect their ability to go to work or to do work because we have a lot of people that right now are working with their cars, delivering food, delivering other groceries, other things to people that can't go out. So uh, thank you, Gabriela. Let's see, what other news do we have? Uh, well, this is a good news. Uh, we now have another group of people that are allowed to get the vaccine. Uh, we have union workers and social workers and some um, other people that has been working here in the in New York. And that means that we're uh, a step further and that everybody gets the vaccine. I don't qualify yet to get the vaccine, but that news for me means that uh, pretty You're much closer. we are all good. <laughs> and uh, that it's such good news because it yeah. doesn't mean that the COVID is going to disappear. It doesn't mean that you're not going to get it, but that means that it's not going to spread that easily. And that's yep. the main concern that how, uh, how easy the COVID is spreading. And uh, you still have to wear a mask. You still have to wash your hands. And yep. something that is very funny is that yeah, some people realized how um, unsanitary they they behaved uh, in the past because some people said, "Oh, I never washed my hands," and now I saw that my hands <laughs> all the time. So, uh, well, you still have to do those things. Uh, still have to practice social distancing, and it's no guarantee that you're not going to get the uh, COVID, but. Uh, there's a huge probability that you are not going to get it, and that's really good. That's some yep. really something good that you want to hear. That uh, the chances are less and less uh, every time a person gets the vaccine. Right, and I got the vaccine. I got two doses. So did my wife. And uh, sadly, two weeks ago, a person that was working very closely with us came down with COVID. So I did get tested. I'm negative. The vaccine protects, but it's not 100%. So you should get tested if you've been exposed. But luckily, when I was with that person, my wife and I, we were both wearing our mask. And I want to remind everyone, if your nose is not covered, you're breathing in whatever's in the air. You're breathing pollution. Yes, this protects us from that. Your, the pollen in the air for those that suffer allergies. And yes, viruses, including COVID. So please do wear your mask, do practice social distancing. And remember, the more people that can get vaccines, the better for all of us, because then it's not transmitted that easily. And yes, our government is doing I think it's an excellent job considering that we have few vaccines that some people might complain that they're not getting the vaccine yet. Okay. I understand. But I do know that Europe, other countries, they're in the third wave. I don't want our city or our country to get into the third wave. So Gabriela, I think you had one more piece of news for us. Uh, in other words, be talking about um, transportation. Uh, yep. This is something that I don't have plenty of information because I think it's really new, brand new. And uh, Mayor de Blasio is suggesting, I don't know what the word, what work I can use <laughs> is plan add um, bike and pedestrian lanes in the in MTA bridges. And um, yeah, that's something important. There's a lot of uh, bike lanes here in New York, and some are not practical. Uh, that doesn't mean that dangerous. You, 
painting some lines and then you say here here's a bike lane just as if it's that easy it's not that easy um it's a major problem because streets here are very narrow uh sometimes it's complicated for two cars to go past the street imagine now uh, adding a bike lane uh, imagine that every street has a lot of cars parked and a lot of streets has uh, now outdoor dining that complicates everything even more because there's no no space here in New York. The streets are very narrow or uh, you can barely pass. And now if you're going to be adding in every street, you're going to be adding a bike lane. You have to do it carefully and you have to do it uh, being really smart because it's not just adding a lot of paint. Yeah, it's not just painting lines. One of my, uh, and people have heard me before, I, I think we have not planned adequately for our bike lanes. I was a cyclist for years, for decades. I used to ride my bicycle to go to teach in school. And I rode my bicycle. I've, I've ridden bicycles to the Bronx. I've ridden them to, Man to Manhattan and to Brooklyn. No, I didn't ride it to Staten Island, though I had the opportunity with the, uh, with, the, with the bike tour that is the first weekend in May. But um, I feel that a lot of our bike lanes were not planned, and they're dangerous. They're dangerous for cyclists. And they forced people on bicycles to go on sidewalks sometimes, which makes it very dangerous for our seniors, for our children, for parents with baby strollers, and for the disabled, people in wheelchairs. It's, it, can, it requires better planning, and that's what I see. Now, as for our bridges, a number of bridges, you can go, and I used to go, that's why, uh, you can go from Queens to Manhattan, to Brooklyn, to uh, to the Bronx, you can go via our bridges. There is a bike lane and a pedestrian lane. The Brooklyn Bridge one is well known that people can just go from Brooklyn to Manhattan. But what's more important is that if you're going to put a crossing for bicycles, and pedestrians, it has to be safe. It has to be planned. And that part is where I feel that we were, we've missed the boat on that one. Now we're talking about transportation. And I want to point out transportation is getting from one place to another. That's simple. Now, transportation includes walking pedestrians. Transportation, of course, includes bicycles, our electric motorcycles and electric bicycles, our electric scooters. It includes every way people are using to go from one place to another. And in New York City, for example, we're very lucky. We have sidewalks in most places. When you have sidewalks, it's easy to walk. Now, during the winter, we do have problems. Why? Because though people have to clean their sidewalks, and they usually do, the intersections, the crossings, the street crossings, nobody takes care of that unless a good neighbor just walks over to that corner and starts cleaning up the crossing. Then you can find, uh, you're finding over there huge puddles freezing puddles when you put your feet on top of that it sink and now you're you're yeah. soaking uh above your your uh, uncle yeah and sometimes it happens you have to watch uh i've been, i've been stuck there like for two minutes looking or oh, i passed uh, looking for a way to to walk over that and not yeah. getting hit by the car yeah, and not slipping on the ice that's underneath the water. Now, these are, you might say, these are small problems. 
But for the person that wants to cross that street, it's a very serious problem. And that's why you find that uh, people who have trouble moving around, getting around, you're, you're disabled, your seniors, your children sometimes, they will stay inside after a snowstorm until everything is cleaned up. So that's our basic form of transportation. But we have to talk about the other forms of transportation the ones that we use to get to work, that we mainly use to get to work. How many minutes do I have left, uh, Gabriela? Less than a minute. Okay, so we'll continue with this conversation in a moment, but right now we're gonna take a break. This is the Manny Perez Show. I'm Manny Manuel Perez. I'm here to serve you always and to help you. With me is our journalist, Gabriela Scanio, and our production engineer, Julio Camacho, from Julio and America TV Productions. So we'll be right back with you. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Manny Perez Show. I'm Manny Manuel Perez, always here for my community, community leader, political leader, and yes, a person who works with people just like you so that you can create a brand new future full of success and yes, prosperity. And I help my community find solutions. With me is our journalist, Gabriel Ascanio, our production engineer, Julio Camacho, and we're talking about transportation. The first part of our program, we covered basically the most basic transportation. Walking, using a bicycle, using other modes of very local transportation. And uh, now we're gonna talk about what transportation is all about and why it's so important. Because transportation, yes, it's the way of getting from one place to another. But in New York City, it's how we get to work. If you have a job, you need to use public transportation normally or a car. It's that simple. And New York City, just like most American cities, was designed for cars. And that's one of the problems we have, that it was designed to use a lot of cars. But having a car in New York City is very expensive and not everybody can afford it. So over 100 years ago, private companies developed the elevated lines for subways, the bus lines to take people from one place to another. And those bus lines were pretty good, but people complained that they were expensive. So the city and state, the government, they took over those private companies and created the MTA, promising better service, lower cost to all the people. Now at the beginning, like many government promises, oh, it worked wonderfully, but in the last 20 years, we've seen the rip, the only thing the MTA has been doing is repairing, repairing what's broken. It was funny last week, they were saying, oh, we've replaced the signal lights from last century. So now trains will be able to move more quickly in our system. Why did it take so long to replace signal lights that are 100 years old? Guys, you got to do things better. You've got to plan for changes. Now, changes can't be done overnight. And I know that politically, 
uh, doing repairs to a bridge, to a subway line, to streets that take more than four years. And if people don't remember, the BQE took 20 years and they're still repairing it. Okay, it's a very long-term project. So the politician that approves it is pretty sure that somebody else will be celebrating when <laughs> the new installation is opened up to the public. But we have to do it. We have to plan for it. We have to prepare the investments. Behind me, you can see the seven line. That's an elevated train. All of the elevated lines in the city have a problem that they're very difficult to expand, so they haven't been expanded. I mean, they do some repairs, they try little things, but it requires a lot of planning and it requires investing. But we need to make our subways, our elevated lines, able to move more people. Why? Because they're crowded already. Right now, COVID, we know that they're not 100% full. They're not like they were a year and a half ago. That's true. I respect the reality, but I know that as soon as we're out of the pandemic, people are going to be back on the subways and we're going to be facing packed subway cars again. Now, the seven line is still packed when we're talking about um, your peak hours, your, oh boy, I, don't tell me I forgot the word, Gabriela. <laughs> yes, rush hours. We still have trouble during rush hour. Oh my God, forgetting such a word. But the idea is that during rush hours, yes, we, we do have congestion and it's going to get worse soon. Why? High school students and middle school students that have to travel from one place to another. They get free Metro cards. So guess what? During rush hours, that's the same time when schools are going to open, students get on the train. And yes, it creates congestion on the trains and they also get on the buses. And for those of us that ride the Q66, it's very interesting how you get on the Q66 in between seven and eight, and you have so many students on it. So we're talking about planning. We're talking about making investments and thinking of how people are going to get to work. Because to get to work is the purpose, or one of the main purposes of our transportation system here in this city. That tourists use it? Yeah, I know that. I've done it. It's a great way to get to museums, to parks, to the, the botanical gardens. I agree. Our public transportation system is great for that. But people need it to get to work and to school and to come back. So that's the most important part of a transportation system. And I invite you to let us know what you're thinking what your concerns are, what problems we need to solve in the coming years. Because I'm, this is something that very few politicians wanna talk about because there's no easy solution. What do you think, Gabriela, about our transportation here? Well, my perception is a little bit different than yours. <laughs> I come from a country that has no public transportation. And if you see some, um, you can see that they are very damaged. Uh, you can see they're tilted because of the many people that are inside of, of the bus. You can see that people are hanging out, uh, grabbing the sides of the door of the bus because they want to get to work, but there is not enough buses in the city. So I have never used the public transportation over there, but then I come, came here, I don't have a car here. And um, I, I think the public transportation here is wonderful. Uh, I can see through an app that 
every 20 minutes a bus is going to get in the in the station and um if i see that a bus is going to get there at 7 30 i leave my i leave the house at 7 25 and i walk um yeah, you the walk bus stop. Yeah. and then i the bus stop and then i wait there like two minutes and then at the time that i was expecting it it arrives so um you have air conditioner you have uh heating inside the bus especially because we live in a city that's very hot or it's very cold depending on the day um but i think it's wonderful uh i love to use the, the bus i love to walk here i really like the the seven train and um that you you spoke about this um that you mentioned it i don't of course you can see a lot of people in rush hour but uh be honest so let's get honest um there's a lot of people that are, that want to get to work and here in a city that public transportation is a need because having a car here it's a nightmare i wasted over an hour uh circling uh, a street trying to find a parking spot and uh getting being stuck over for 25 minutes in manhattan because the the traffic don't doesn't move it's a nightmare i don't like that uh, i mean i think uh maybe someday i will own a car here because uh it's easier to get some places but i think the public transportation here it's wonderful i don't have any complaints about it maybe sometimes it arrives uh five, eight minutes later than it should be, but I don't think that's a major problem. I think a lot of people uh, can say that, oh, eight minutes, it's a lot, but for me, it's not a lot. For me, it's nothing. Uh, and um, <laughs> I've been I've been here for a short period and you've been living here for a long time. And I know that you can see the, the bigger picture, but as far as I know, the, the public transportation is the best. Okay. What do you think? You're watching this program. What do you think? What do you think about our transportation? Get in touch with us. Let us know. I think you know that I'm in touch with our, our elected representatives, with our political leaders. We do have ways of finding out, getting information, but more important is to hear from you because you're the one that's living it. Do you agree with Gabriela, who has a, a, the perspective of someone that's coming from a place with really horrible public transportation, and uh, which is something many people don't realize actually still exists outside of the US. In the US, we do have a better public transportation system than most countries simply because we citizens have forced our public officials to answer to our problems to give us good answers that's what democracy is about but then some people might disagree with that and they say no we want something even better i know i want something better I want accessible train stations. There's a court order. 30 years ago, the court said you need to make all train stations accessible to the disabled, to seniors, to people with baby carriages. The MTA has been repairing a few a year, and they still have most of them to improve. The seven train is one of the problems because I live close to it. And there are just a few train stations that are accessible in the seven train line in Queens. This kind of problem I think shouldn't exist, but maybe you disagree with me. Gabriela, of course, she she feels and she's she's right. Compared to her experience, 
public transportation here is excellent. So, what do you think? Because I think I'm out of time, right, Gabriela? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so what do you think? Get in touch with us. Please let us know. Let's start a conversation on this. And I thank you for sharing this time with us. This topic is one that we could continue for hours. But now, I do have to take my leave. And with me, our journalist, Gabriela Scano, Julio in America TV Productions, myself, Manny Manuel Perez, from the Manny Perez Show. We all thank you, and we remind you that next Monday, 7 p.m., we'll be back with you talking about another aspect of our community and our city. So this is the Manny Perez Show, and thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for joining us on the Manny Perez Show, the show that covers, works on, and solves our community's issues. Yes, we can. The Manny Perez Show. 